So if you were to ask me, hey, Reed, what have you been working on lately? I'd probably stop for a second because technically the answer is a clock, but not a normal clock. I wanted to understand how microcontrollers actually talk to real hardware. I bought this real-time clock chip, the RV8803, and these real-time clocks are incredibly valuable because they can allow you to timestamp data logs, uh, tell devices to wake up at a specific time. One specific use case that comes to mind is when a camera battery dies. The device continues to remember what data it is when you recharge the battery and reinsert it. That's because there's actually a coin cell embedded within that PCB soldered to the board that's keeping that real-time clock ticking even though the camera itself is dead. And it comes with a coin cell backup battery and I decided that I wouldn't use any pre-built drivers or libraries focusing on getting this tied together with an STM32. So if any of those use cases seem like they might match your project, a real-time clock is probably gonna be your best bet here. So with that, I used an STM32 microcontroller as the main brain for this project and hooked it up to my real-time clock using a breadboard. Along the way, I ran into a lot of little moments that felt like things were broken uh, before they made sense. That would include things like enabling the I2C bus within the STM32. Every device also has a unique address, so if you get it wrong, you're basically just shouting into the void if your microcontroller doesn't know who it's talking to. There was another small issue where it looked like the hex values coming back from the RTC were just jumping around and not quite aligning until I went into the data sheet and realized that it was organized in a binary coded decimal format. So once these things clicked, everything started to make a little bit more sense. So instead of writing the drivers from complete scratch, I decided to go see what was available for the chip on SparkFun. And in their GitHub repo, they did have some headers available but they were written in C++ and my STM32 project was written in C. So after a little bit of manual conversion from their C++ libraries over to the C language that I needed for my project, I was able to replace some of the functionality of talking to an Arduino and replacing that with some of the abstraction layers that are used in talking to the STM32 I2C bus. The best moment though was setting the time on the RTC automatically based on when the code was compiled and watching those seconds tick up one by one over the UART terminals. And watching those seconds come back was an indicator that I had actually set this up properly. So this confirmed that I was setting the time properly and also reading it off of the device as well. But this didn't actually test one of the main purposes of the real-time clock, which is does it work with a power failure? So next, I unplugged everything, completely powered off the board, and let that clock continue to tick up. And then when I repowered on the STM32, the results were perfect. The tiny battery on the back of the RTC perfectly kept its time. So after seeing this real-time clock do its job perfectly, I knew that I had the interface and the knowledge to be able to put this into future projects. So that's what I've been working on lately.